Hey, good morning or good afternoon or good evening whenever you are watching this video. Uh, this is day 340 of the GC365. We are so close to being done. Uh, it is good and bad at the same time, but I'm always excited for a new year. But here's the deal. I have a special guest with me. I have my amazing son. What's your name? Roman. And how old are you, Roman? Eight. Okay. Now, Roman, what do you like to do on your free time? Normally play my iPad. It's super fun. <laughs> okay. What about play soccer, right? Yeah. And you're a pretty good soccer player, right? Yay! <laughs> do, what, what, do you play offense or defense? I normally play defense. I don't like going in front because I always like staying back just yep. in case the ball comes back. Yep. Roman is a natural defender. He's a really good defender. I played defense all growing up, so it's quite I'm quite proud as a dad that he's playing defense too. Uh, but the reason why Roman is with me today is he's going to help me talk about our one-year Bible reading. And in the one-year Bible reading, the first part of it is in Hosea. Not a lot of great stuff. What I want to do and what we want to do is focus in on 2 John. Now, what's interesting, the epistles, or the, the epistles are the smaller books of the Bible in the New Testament. Uh, a lot of these epistles are actually letters written from Paul or from other apostles to different churches at the time uh, that were just brand new church plants. And so you get like a snapshot of a letter of a guy writing to another person or written to the church, but it's also now in the Bible because it's considered to be authoritative. And so as we read this, this is like an actual letter. There's like a greeting. He talks to some people, but then he gives some really good direction for it. And what I love about 2 John, it's all about telling the truth. And what's fun for us, right? We like to tell the truth at our household. We also like to joke around a lot. And by we, uh, it's me. Uh, I am uh, constantly like, like trying to joke around with the kids and I'll say things that are kind of lies, but I'm joking, right? So like, what's one of the things that I've said in the past where I was kind of joking? Oh, when, when you said, I'm going to eat all your candy. <laughs> That's true. You know, when, uh, when they go hit trick or treating, I often tell them that I'm going to eat all of their candy. They can't have any, right? Or what's another joke that I'll do sometimes with you? You don't like ice cream. <laughs> that is also true. Uh, that's a big, big joke in the Dixon household because we all love ice cream, don't we? We love to go to, what's our favorite place we go to? Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Yeah, we love Dairy Queen. It's an unhealthy habit we have as a family. But we like to tell, we like to have a lot of jokes, you know, but at the end of the day, telling the truth is important. And what John does, or what, what, what John is doing when he's writing, it says to the chosen lady of this household, he talks about why it's so important to tell the truth. Now, I'm going to ask Roman, Roman, why do you think it's important to tell the truth? Uh, to glorify God and to bless others. Mm. And do you think it blesses others because they get to see God a little bit? Like you get to, like the more you tell the truth, they can even like see God in you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think sometimes when we tell the truth, it helps people see that there's something different about you. And they might even ask, man, there's something, you know, this person's always telling the truth. He's always being honest and genuine. And it seems like a lot of the times today in our workplaces and in our world, that's not the case. And so when you're honest and truthful, uh, it is different and it actually glorifies God which is totally, totally true. What he also talks about too, when he's talking about being uh, truthful, he says that I'm writing to remind you in verse five, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is a new command. This is not a new commandment, but we have had that we've had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us and that he's commanded us to love one another just as you've heard from the beginning. So Roman, why is it important for us to love other people? Um, so, so more people can believe in God and they can see God in, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To, to see people 
when they're telling the truth and they're loving them. And right? when the people make bad choices, they start making good choices and start helping other people. There you go. I love it. You know, it's really, really, really easy to be mean. We all know that. We know it's really hard sometimes is to love people. And when you love people, it makes an impact on those around you. And there's been no secret to the gospel and how the gospel spread. Uh, the gospel has spread for 2,000 years because the church has lived differently from everybody else around them. Uh, they've lived differently and they've loved people genuinely. And because it's such a different theme uh, in the world, it makes a big impact and a big difference. And people end up, they ask the question, man, why are you being so honest? Why, why, are, you, why, why are you different? I, I'm sure maybe at some point you've had that asked of you. I've had that asked of me of different points. And it's been my opportunity to say, I believe in God. God's changed my life and I don't have to live the way that I used to live. So yeah, telling the truth is important. Loving people is important. And then it goes on and he says this. Uh, he says that many people have been, uh, there's many deceivers that have gone into the world. They deny that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver. And the big thing that they're talking about too, the truth and maybe you've caught this, maybe you haven't, but right now in 2021, getting ready to be 2022, there's been this new thought, but it's really not a new thought. It's been happening for thousands of years where people try and devalue the Bible or they devalue Jesus. And they're like, you know, Jesus is a good guy. He's a prophet, but he's not God. Jesus is uh, a religious figure. He's a prophet. He uh, he's a person of high value, but he did not die on the cross and raise from the dead. And then they'll say, you know what? This Bible, this Bible is just a book. It's not really the truth. And what John is saying in 2 John 2 is that, no, no, no. The truth is the most important thing. And the truth back then is the same as the truth for us today. And it's still in the crosshairs. Is that the truth is that Jesus really is God. And the truth of the fact of that when we wrestle with the scripture, we wrestle with it, but ultimately I understand that this is the truth. Uh, that when we read the Bible, we can understand what the truth is through the Bible. Uh, what's funny is 2000 years ago, the same arguments are happening as they are today in 2021. A lot of people debating, is Jesus really who he said he is? A lot of people debating, can you really trust the Bible? I wanna tell you, you can trust the Bible, you can trust it as truth. Uh, we read the Bible, right? We try to. Uh, the, the kids read their Bibles. They're at a school that helps them do that as well, which is really great. But I want you guys to know, leading up to the end of the year, what truth is. Truth, we tell the truth because it glorifies God, like Romans said. We tell the truth because it helps other people see who God is. And it also says that we're supposed to love people because it blesses them as well. Uh, those are right out of the mouth of my son, Roman. So Roman, before we close, do you want to tell anybody anything? Um, I just wanted to say, um, everybody is blessed. God blessed you. God made you. God loves you. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> A little preacher right there. So there you go. That's the, uh, that's the end of our talk. This is Mr. Roman, and my name's Brian from our Woodenville campus. We love you guys. Have a great rest of the day.